up here one standing right here and I kept hearing an airplane. Well, what the Hello and welcome to Electric Cane Safari. I'm your host Chris Cottle and today we are standing on the state line. We're here at Pound Gap. It was the gateway for the Civil War and we're going to be looking around here today and then we're going to go and go down into Jenkins and maybe even go out to Raven Rock and show Jenkins from there. So uh, if you look over here this is our big monument we've got. We'll do a little bit of on that, then we'll we'll read some of it to you and let you know a little bit more history. Now, when you hear of the President Lincoln, you think he's the only president that was born in Kentucky. Well, that is not true. Uh, president Jefferson Davis was also born in Kentucky. He was born in Fairview, Kentucky. And the interesting part about it is Lincoln was a Union and the President Davis was a Confederate. So Lincoln's uh, Union regiments was the 14th Kentucky Infantry, the 14th Kentucky Cavalry, the 47th Kentucky Infantry, Three Forts Battalion, Harlan County Battalion, and the 39th Kentucky Mounted Rifles. Now with President Davis for the Confederates, he was the 5th Kentucky Infantry, 7th Confederate Cavalry, 10th Kentucky Cavalry, 10th Kentucky Mounted Rifles, 13th Kentucky Cavalry, 21st Virginia Infantry, the 64th Virginia Cavalry, and the 50th Virginia Infantry. Sorry. This is a pretty neat thing that I, I really didn't know because when you when you think of uh, President Lincoln, you know, automatically think, you know, he was born in Hodgesville, Kentucky, and, and everybody associates him with being the only president that was born in Kentucky, and, that, and this proves that it's not true. President Jefferson Davis was also born in Kentucky and I think it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful sight to come up here and see this and we're going to go and look at something else now. Okay, here we are on the other side of the, the monument here at Pound Gap. A um, couple of interesting facts on this side. General John Hunt Morgan, he was the Thunderbolt of the Confederacy. He uh, was involved in a, a battle of Whitesburg. The first battle was December 13th, 1862. The second battle of Whitesburg was April 16th, 1865. And then Mr. James A. Garfield, he was the youngest Union General, 20th President of the United States also. And uh, he was involved in the Battle of Pound Gap on March 16th, 1862 and also in the Battle of Collie, Rockhouse Ruckus, May 13th, 1864. Now the Civil War in, in Letcher County, it was truly a war against families. Like you had a brother that would go with the Confederacy and, the, and another brother would go with the Union. So you fought, you fought against your brother, you fought against your neighbors. And you know, it was just a, a really, really rough time in history. So we'll, uh, we'll move on to something else now and let you look at this one more time. All right, you're looking at a symbolization of a, uh, a cemetery here up on Pound Gap. And the, the last grave down there, it symbolizes a, a grave of an unnamed soldier. Uh, they are, they're, there are quite a few unnamed soldiers in Letcher County. And uh, our, our, my friend Richard Brown, he, he is uh, with the Ben Cottle Camp. And uh, they do a lot of work uh, finding the names of the soldiers and finding the graves. They've actually found unmarked graves also. And I just wanted you to see this and see what it meant to everybody. Okay, now you're looking at uh, some monuments here. They've got the names of uh, Civil War soldiers on them, on them and they were 
they were helped, you know, with taxpayer money plus private uh, people to uh, show off the people's names. And uh, Whitaker Bank, uh, Community Trust Bank, Kendra Drilling Company, Lutcher County Physical Court, of course. Um, we've got uh, a few more people that's helped with the purchase of these uh, monuments. Uh, Dry Fort Market uh, and Lutcher County Tourism Commission also helped place these monuments up here for our enjoyment and for everybody to come up here and learn a little bit of Letcher County history. Okay, this is one last look at this tribute to the Civil War soldiers and the history of Letcher County. Um, we just wanted to show you the whole area. There's been many battles fought right here on this ground and I just, I just think that's a really a cool fact and, and you know, Letcher County has got rich history and this is part of it. All right, while you're up here at the Civil War Tribute, um, you can turn around and look behind you and you can actually see the pro shop and the golf course at Jenkins at Raven Rock Golf Course. Um, we're going to zoom in on it and show you the, the pro shop and restaurant. thought that was pretty neat. We both turned around and said, there it is. Well, you, you got better eyes than I did. <laughs> you saw it a lot quicker than I did. So that's a pretty, it's, it's beautiful over there. And we're going in on a very slow zoom here, but the water tank is very visible right now. Yeah, that's the water tank for the city of Jenkins. And right down below it is uh, the pro shop. And then, of course, the golf course is all the green out there. I've played that course up there, but I'm not a very good golfer, Rick. So um, I, don't, I don't go up there very often, but it's, I like to go look at it. <laughs> That's it. That's the pro shop, yeah. And now we'll let them see how far away it is. Yeah, way far away. <laughs> you just got to turn around and look behind you. Just thought we'd share that with you. All right. Now we're on our way out to the Raven Rock area. I've heard of this all my life. I've never saw it, never been to it. So, you want to talk a little bit about the, the story I was telling you about how this road became a road? Now you know that story better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody remembers Dr. T. M. Perry, uh, Chris, this area, and he worked for uh, Bethlehem Steel. Right. And out here at Raven Rock is where the coal company would bring. Uh, visitors to show the great town that they had built. Right, because Jenkins was a model city. Exactly. And of course this town was built just to, to mine the coal in this area. Right. There was no road out here. There was, uh, you, you took horses up here. And Dr. T.M. Perry's wife, as you know, was, uh -huh. was paralyzed. Right. So she, could, she wanted to come out here. She couldn't ride a horse. Right. So they built this road for Dr. T.M. Perry's wife, uh, a gentleman named Dave Zagier, uh -huh. did. I know that you're a little familiar with him. Yeah. So Dave Zagier built this very road. He uh, is the one that, that made the decision, pulled the trigger, and had the authority to have it built. Oh, yeah. Just so she could get out here. Just for that one lady. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Perry uh, made house calls, of course, and delivered babies. Wow. I can remember when I was a very young boy coming to, to visit me when I was sick. Well, I don't remember any doctors coming to see me when I was little, but I do remember having a real bad earache one time in the middle of the night. And uh, my dad, Caleb, is from the Kingdom Come area. Uh -huh. And he knew this old man, and I can't remember his name, but he could cure like sore throats and earaches. Really? Yeah. And I can't really remember a whole lot about it, but they took me up in Kingdom Come Creek that night. We lived uh, right at, right around Whitco area. And um, I remember going up into this dark driveway and I, it was late at night. It was probably one or two in the morning, I, I think. It may have been earlier, but they, you know, seems late to a kid. But it was dark. And I remember walking into this house and this old man sitting in there. And he was 
smoking a pipe or a cigar or something. And he took some of that smoke and held my head and blew it in my ear and said a few words. And by the time I got back home, my earache had, had went away. Don't think something like that happened to me in college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'll, you know. Uh, but that really did, did get rid of your earache. Yeah, it got rid of my earache. Yeah, and like wow. I said, you know, I was young. I don't remember how old I was. Uh, Mom might put on Facebook how old I was at that time, but I remember them doing that and taking me up there. So if you get a little angry, a little bit of smoke comes out of your ear. It's probably it's just natural. natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a little bit left over from your uh, medical experience. Yeah, that puts a whole new meaning to blowing smoke. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was uh, that's pretty wild. And a friend of mine, his dad, he uh, can stop. Like if you're bleeding real bad, uh -huh. he, he can stop the bleeding. How would he do that? He stick his thumb in the wound and say a few words and he'll quit bleeding. I saw that done. So old, old time uh, medicine, I guess you would call it, still works today. I saw him do that while I was in high school. So you have a real good recollection of that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty neat to uh, see that done. You uh, used to, many years ago, the area that we're going to was open to the public. We right. We'd have picnics out here. I can remember Mom and Dad bringing me out here when I was young. And yeah. We'd run and play and just, just have a big old time. I've always wanted to come up here, you know, and, Ever, ever since I can remember, there's been a gate out there where you can't come up here, you know. Yeah. But, but like I said, you know, when I was younger, it may have been it may have been open. But ever since I can remember, like the teenage years up, but you couldn't come out here. Well, I know the county would would love to buy this off of Tico and develop it. Yeah. And maybe one day they'll be able to do that. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever saw it, you know, and it looks uh, it looks like something in Tennessee, you know. And I say that a lot, but you know this area resembles the Great Smoky Mountains so much. It's you know it's not even funny. Goldenrod's in full bloom, along with the pollen. Yeah, the allergies have been killing. Allergies season is here. There's an old fence over there. On, yeah, right we're, there. We're here. Okay. All right, we're back and uh, we're here at Raven Rock. And if you look over here, this used to be a picnic area, uh, and you can, you know, you can imagine kids running around playing and picnic blankets out, people eating, having a good time. The old fence I was talking about earlier, well, you know, it used to be painted white, and uh, this is all grown up since they've quit. Uh, allowing the public to come up here. Uh, it is private land and maybe one of these days, you know, everybody will be able to enjoy it. Okay, now we're gonna walk down this little path to Raven Rock. Keep in mind, Chris, I can remember some of the earliest memories I have with my family of them holding my hand. Walking down this path. Walking down this path see and you know and I'm sure that a lot of people that will see this will have the same memories and you know that and that's what that's why I do this you know because there's so much that we we that you all have seen that I've not seen you know uh, and and older people have seen that we haven't seen and we took it for granted we saw some wild grapes somewhere a while ago yeah I meant to show those I will try to get them on the way back out some wild grapes growing and this used to, of course, not be overgrown like this. It was a clear path. Right. It is a pretty day, though. Nice September day. Today's the 14th. Mountain Heritage time be shortly. September 14th. Yep. Now, you can see this looks a lot like Botch Rock. It's the same type of rock that box rock is made out of. It's just on further 
down the mountain. And here it is, this is Raven Rock. I've wanted to see this for a long time. And here we are. Now they used to have a fence that went around where people could come up here. And uh, the pole, it, um, it rusted out on this side. Now, let me get a hold of the camera here a little bit better. I'm gonna try to show you a little bit of stuff here. Now out there is uh, where Ferris is at the industrial site. And on up here, that's uh, Taylor Metal right there. Then the pump station for EQT. And there is, uh, there's the new four lane. And right up above that is the golf course. And right there is the uh, pro shop again. And we back back out and pan around a little bit more. There's an old, uh, the old industrial site. And then right down below it is the fire department, the gas station, the family dollar, the uh, grocery store there. And then the city hall. Come down, there's some more, there's a couple churches right there down on Main Street. And then if you keep going down to the right, this is the Burdine, is that right? Yeah. Burdine area. Now, let me uh, move up here a little bit and I will show you the baseball fields. If I can see them. Yeah, right there's the baseball fields. You can see a long way up here too. There's Rick taking pictures, of course. <laughs> Just a beautiful view, downtown Jenkins. Nestled right down at the foot of Pine Mountain. It's just, uh, I love it. Right down, let's see if I can see it. Right down there is the coal mining museum and the bank it looks like city hall there's a bank all right now rick's great 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 grandfather two greats great great grandfather uh, Rick was telling me a story about him. Why don't you share that with everybody? I thought that was pretty interesting. It's been said uh, that John Wright stood on this rock and pondered as he looked out over what would become Jenkins. At the time, he had collected quite a bit of land in this area, and explorers had been here and discovered that there'd be coal in them Mare Hill. <laughs> well, he knew that coal was very valuable, but he wondered if there would ever be a day when he would see any money from the coal that was in this land, this beautiful land that he was looking at uh, and that he owned. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer to that question uh, was inevitably yes, but it was not easy. Right. And uh, just to, to be abundantly clear, my mother, her maiden name is Sandra Mullins. Right. Her dad's name was Ray Mullins. Mm -hmm. Ray's mother was Elizabeth Wright. When I was a young boy, I can remember uh, talking and sitting with Elizabeth Wright. Little did I know that she was the daughter of Devil John. Devil John. That's a pretty, pretty good story. I would say it's probably more than likely true. This is one of the best viewpoints on this mountain. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you can sit and look. You know, right now we're looking over Jenkins, right down in Jenkins. Look there, uh, did I get it? 
Is that a hawk? That is a vulture, looks like. A vulture's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there, at one point, was talk of building a motel up here uh, at this particular location, much like, uh, what do they call it, Cloud Mountain or Cloud City? I think yeah, Cloud City, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, many thought it would come to fruition. Uh, in the late 60s, there was a real big push to have it done. Right. A uh, gentleman of the name of Jim Lucas was behind that. Well, you know, uh, you know, me and you were talking a while ago that uh, the biggest asset this county does have for a tourism is Pine Mountain. It goes from one end of the county to the other, and you can see it just about everywhere you go, you know. So, uh, and, the, and views like this, they're, they're worth a million dollars. And we, we always seem to, to bring up Shad Baker, yeah. the extension officer when we're up on the mountain. And yeah. he is working very hard towards uh, moving that forward with a hiking trail. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Shad, Shad does a good job with the, with the trail system here in the county. So they're going to, there's plans on building something right, right down there, you, you was telling me? Uh, yes, if, if you're looking there, what we're calling our, our industrial, uh, not industrial site really, it's not for industrial purposes, it's for business purposes. Right. They're hoping to have a motel, hoping to have a restaurant, uh -huh. uh, hoping to have maybe a, a Target, uh, wow. things of that nature. And I know that most people will know this, but keep in mind that you can serve um, alcohol by the drink in Jenkins, Kentucky now, right. if you meet the requirements. Yeah. That has held back some businesses from coming to this part of Letcher County in the past, and it's no longer a hurdle, and that's why that dirt has been moved. From what I understand, a gentleman named Greg Johnson had to go all the way down to the bedrock, right. and then had to fill it back up to meet a certain requirement with dirt, right. so it'd be stable enough to build had, large buildings. Had on. to compact it back in. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that's some pretty neat facts. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome, Chris. All right, here's the wild grapes we'd found a while ago. Uh, we'd passed up and I just wanted to let you look at them. They're really pretty, aren't they? Okay, we're on up the mountain at uh, Conley's cabin. And this is the elevation right here, 2794.1 feet above sea level. And <laughs> this is really a, I think, a better view than we had over at the other spot on Raven Rock. And, and for, for those people that might be wondering, uh, in this area, when you look up around Christmas and you can see the little cabin with the lights on, yeah, that that is where we are. It's Connolly's cabin, and uh, used to uh, when I was a young boy, Chris, uh, Mr. Uh, Kelly Desimone from uh -huh. the Roberts would bring Cub Scouts up here. <laughs> uh, Charlie Dixon recalls that fondly. He was the mayor of Jenkins, former school teacher. Right. And this is a breathtaking view. I would love to come out and see this every and, morning. And we're, we're standing on the porch of Conley, Conley's cabin. Wouldn't it be wonderful just to wake up and step out and have <laughs> yeah. this? Every morning. I'm jealous. Now, are you, are you I'm ready? looking at the ball field right now. Okay, let them know what they're looking at. That's the, that's that, the, that's the baseball field. Yep. Now let me. So that would be Joe's branch to the left of it then. Joe's branch. Let me see if I can find it. Let me come back out a little bit. Uh, it's just a little holler there. Yeah, right, right there. The that, that right there from that grassy spot up that way. Then that's the main road up behind it. The new four lane. The new four lane. So now the Joe's branch is a county road, so right. they take care of that. And again, the baseball field over here yeah. um, was a uh, donated by our judge, uh, Kevin Mullins' dad, Russell Mullins, and the road up to there is Russell Mullins Road. Oh, really? Really. Well, I didn't realize that. I guess now you're getting more towards the East Jenkins Burdine area. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Here we go. Now, this is the, the building I'm looking at is the Burdine School, is that correct? It, it is first name of the Burdine Elementary School. It's, it's correct name now is the uh, Jenkins uh, elementary school. Okay, all right. And that would be number one bottom uh, close to down there. There used to be a company store not far down below that. Uh, yeah. It's long gone from the from the. Coal so that's company. number one bottom right there. Well, I, I don't know exactly what you're looking at. Right, right from the right there. That would be number two bottom. Number two, right. okay. Number one's back this way. No, it would be more that way. But oh, okay. Anyway, that's not important. The people that live there will know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know nothing about drinking. That's why I got you today. You know more than, than, than I thought you did. 
Um, and you can go right on down. Eventually, he'll even get out to the rock quarry. Yeah, let me paint out here a little bit, see if I can find it. Now, we right. have a gentleman here in this town named Granville Burke. Uh-huh. And uh, he would take his uh, son, and, uh, his name's Jimmy Polly, and he said they would hike in the mountains. He said the next thing you know, he'd be in Clintwood, or he'd be in Elkhorn City. And right. Right there is the secret to getting to Elkhorn City. That mountain goes, that ridge line goes straight into Elkhorn City. Okay. All right. So yeah. that would be a shortcut. We take these roads and we go all these long way around. And all we got to do is step over Pine Mountain and we're in Virginia. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So right there, let me see, let me go back. This right here is uh, the quarry that we're looking at. And then uh, you can't see it for that tree right there. But on up that way is the, is the quarry, you know, how it's went up the mountain. So there's been a lot of gravel and rock hauled out of that place and blacktop. Man, what a view. Now, I'm guessing we're not far from Pike County out that way. Are you? I'm sure we're looking we're, at Pike County. You see Pike County. It doesn't go much further out through there. Yeah. Uh, that land would be Pike County land. And yeah. And this is a view, like I say, that you can't get from Raven Rock, especially no, no. The, the Burdine area, the Burdine School yeah. down there. And I just can't believe how close we are as the crow flies from here to the uh, baseball field. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's just right there. You feel like you can throw a rock over there. Yeah, yeah. If you can throw a rock over there, I'll buy you dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think of that? I know it's an optical illusion. Yeah, yeah, but ain't that so neat, though. Yeah, but your four-lane road there, everybody knows it goes on out. It goes straight on into Pike County. Yeah, so. yeah, right there. It's real simple. Well, Rick, I I am thrilled that you brought me up here today, and I, and I am jealous as all Dickens <laughs> 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 because I want a place up here. <laughs> well, Chris, you deserve a place like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this is uh, a. As, as much as you love nature and know about uh, the the different things of. Uh, it would be perfect for you. Now, our, our mountain man I mentioned, Granville Burke, yeah. he has got uh, still motion cameras up here. Wow. He has got many pictures of bears. Yeah. He also has videoed bears. He's got these videos of bears going up trees, and you think they go up real slow, but they, they fly, fly up, them. up yes, the trees, man. Yes. Fly up the trees. Yeah. Now, Rick, you was telling me a while ago a Killing Rock story in that hollow that we're looking at. Uh, the name of that hollow is what? It's a Cane Branch. Cane Branch. Mm -hmm. and. I, without giving all the details, a gentleman named Ira Mullins, uh, back uh, in the days of Bad John Wright and Red Fox, uh -huh. came out of that holler. He was a crippled man. Right. He was in a wagon, and people knew he kept a lot of money on him. The amount that he had that day was a little over $2,000. Right. Some gentlemen planned to rob him of his money from the Virginia side. Right. And they stood up and looked off of this mountain down into the Cane Branch. When they seen his wagon coming out, They'd already heard that he was moving his family back into Virginia. Mm -hmm. There is a rock on the Virginia side that you can actually fit down inside and they can't see you. Right. And as his party crossed over the, the mountain into Virginia and went by the Killing Rock, they were prepared and shot most of the party. A young boy got away and a, and a lady got away. And that's how they got in Killing trouble. Rock. That's how they found out who done it and that's how it became the Killing Rock. And the, the, the end of the story is the gentleman responsible for it was a gentleman, Red Fox. Right. He was arrested, put in jail, the Wise County Jail. Uh, he was charged and convicted. They were going to hang him. His only request was to preach his own funeral. <laughs> so he got a white uh, suit, he preached his own funeral, and then they hung him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And there's now, a whole lot more to that story. Oh, yeah. Saying. Well, I know uh, Shad Baker... Uh, I think he puts he together he, he puts together something during uh, October, and and uh, takes a tour out there and talks about about that story. And it sounds like a safari show. Yeah, I believe I'm gonna have to. I was going to go last year, but I had knee surgery and I couldn't walk out there. And uh, I'm going to go this year if I have to uh, catch a helicopter. But uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is this is beautiful. Where is that, Rick? I got it. <laughs> All right, we're back, and I had to sit down to take all the view in. Um, like I said earlier, I'm really jealous because I don't have a place up here like this. And uh, we're we're at Conley's cabin. I'm sitting on the deck. And I guess you consider this the back deck. He's got a front deck also, but this one, you.
you take one step off of it, you're going to land in Jenkins. And it's, it's a site that I've never saw around Ledger County. And Rick's kind of showing you the Christmas light you can see from Jenkins that he's got on his cabin, which I have saw those down, like going towards Pipeful and stuff. And uh, you can see it lit up in December. And it's, it's pretty neat because it's, it's up on top of the mountain. But, you know, I was saying that uh, probably Box Rock is my favorite spot in the county. Now I've got a number two. <laughs> so so uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Conley for allowing us to come up here and, and, and use his uh, deck to uh, look over everything. And it's just, uh, it's, 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 I really appreciate it. I can't, you know, I can't stress how thankful I am for this, but uh, we're gonna go on to something else. Thank you, Mr. Conley. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to leave, and we're going to take one more shot here of uh, Conley's cabin. Uh, this is the what I would call the front deck. Uh, as you come up the hill here to his cabin, and he's got a uh, little fire pit over here behind this uh, tree. He's got his he's got a little bench made there. He's got his fire firewood split. It is just absolutely beautiful up here. And this is Letcher County, believe it or not. I tell you, now they put some work into this and it's paid off for them for a long, long time. All right, we're back and uh, we're back here at the picnic place that uh, everybody used to come and eat and play and go out to Raven Rock. Uh, here's the old fence. and I, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I've been wanting to come out here forever and ever. I thank uh, Rick for getting that done for us today and, and, and remind you, please don't litter and, and, and tear up our county because, I mean, up here is as pristine as it, it was back then and, and it, you know, we don't need to litter. So, but uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. I was up here standing right here and I kept hearing an airplane. Well, what do we do?